Bonjour, lovely to meet you here in beautiful, beautiful Marrakesh. Um, if you could begin with an introduction to this extraordinary film, The Sitting Duck, what can audiences expect when they watch it? Mm. <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, well, they can expect as much as, as I expected, actually, when I first read the book, because I read the book before I read the script. Uh, I'd never heard about that story before. It's a very, very impressive uh, story what happened to this woman who got caught in this political economical trap uh, just because she wanted to fight for uh, employment and but then she didn't realize how she was going it was going to extend so many extra layers of her single fight and uh, so she, she she it's really the fight of one individual one single individual against a huge majority of people that she does not even suspect, actually. Mm. And what might be the specific challenges, but also opportunities, of playing uh, a real-life person, um, telling a true story? I guess maybe you have some kind of responsibility to, to, to tell the truth of the story, but also you need to bring that character to life. No, I never felt any responsibility. Uh, and. Uh, and I had to get uh, as much freedom as I want because otherwise it's not interesting. And I thought the character was uh, very, um, really allowed myself to let my imagination to, to build something which makes it interesting because what was interesting about that story is not, it's not only the aggression she went through and she had to support, but it's also the suspicion. That's the second half of the story. And it was what was interesting for me as an actress was to make uh, this suspicion being understood and being um, believable, and uh, so uh, and, and and therefore it becomes a very cinematographic character. Plus, I was helped by the physical appearance of Maureen Kearney, who she's special <laughs> with her blonde hair. She's almost like a Hitchcockian uh, heroine with kind of jewels and the way she dresses up and uh, and so all these elements together made a really a real cinema character because I, I think you know what's interesting about this film is to really to bring cinema as much as possible it's not maybe people are uh, now people are very much quite rightly maybe but obsessed but not only about true fact but about stories and subjects subjects mm -hmm. subjects you know but you never want to lose the idea of doing a film and bringing mise-en-scene and bring all what what fiction can bring to a story like this. Otherwise, it's not worthwhile doing it, for me, at hmm. least. And what kind of preparation went into playing her? How did you see her as a person? Did you kind of rely mostly on the script or did you kind of do your own research? How did you get under the skin of her? No, I just read the script and it's, you know usually when you click with the character it's very it's like a chemical uh, experience so it, it boof it comes together very really <laughs> easily and uh, I never talked to her uh, well I did talk to her a couple of times because when sh she came on set but I, I didn't I, I didn't try to copy her except for what I said you know this you know the mm. blonde hair and, and little details but um, um, I let myself, um, my own imagination, do the work mm. for me. And what about working with Jean-Paul and kind of being on set with him and what's he like as a director? Well, this was my second film with Jean-Paul Salome because I did the Mama Weed before and uh, I think there was a kind of constant theme in his films. He's always interested with uh, these kind of persons who disguise themselves or to, who try to in somehow is just kind of displaced from, from one place to the other and uh, so uh, I think there was a kind of continuity between Mama Weed and this, uh, this character and uh, I like working with him because he let, let, uh, left me completely free mm. to do what I wanted to do and uh, with no, you know, uh, nothing was imposed, that was nice.
And what do you hope people take away from watching a film like this? Because it feels like there are so many themes that arise from it. I mean, you know, the idea of being a woman in such a male dominated world, um, but also kind of the violence that can, mm. is ready to erupt mm. out of this seemingly kind of, you know, professional business mm. world. Mm. Yeah, I think that's, again, when I watched the film again last night, I, 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 thought, I said to myself, you have several themes uh, being weaved together in the film, you know, I mean, of course, the political situation, but the nuclear uh, situation in France, but not, not only that, you know, you have also the, the way uh, she has to, to relate to all these men and the way she's suspected because she's a woman. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, but of course she takes risks and you understand that all her life she yeah she 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 tried to maintain a very risky position when well i don't want to unveil part of the film but when the, her lawyer recalls her about the previous rape she's been a victim but the way she reacted to that rape you know and in in a way uh, it reminded me what a, a, a kind of what the, some of the themes I uh, explored uh, already in L with Paul Verhoeven because it's always, you know, when you show a film, who da a woman who doesn't want to be shown and to, and who doesn't want to behave as a victim, that's when the fight mm -hmm. starts, and that's what exa it's exactly what happens to her. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly the same way it happens in L. She doesn't want to be a victim. She mm -hmm. says, "I'm not a good victim." Mm -hmm. And you've been so prolific in your career and done so many amazing films. Another f recent film of yours about Joan I found incredibly mm. moving. How do you choose the roles that you take on now? Um, and do you feel like there's any genre or, or director that you haven't yet been able to work with yet? Oh, yes, a lot, certainly. <laughs> but it's not so much about uh, if I want to work with them, but it's more about if they want to work with me. So. Um, I choose. Uh, I choose. It's 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 a combination. Mm. I think the. I still believe that the director remains the key piece to the ensemble, and so that's what I'm after. Mm. Cinema, cinema, mise en scène. <laughs> and finally, how do you feel like the cinema industry has changed in the in the course of you, you know, of your career, and 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 you know, for, has it changed for the better? I don't think it changed so much in in. You know, when, when it happens, what really happens in front of a camera, this privileged little moment, little but so important, that hasn't really changed, mm. no. It's been absolutely wonderful to speak to you. Thank you so much for sharing all that. Really enjoy the rest of your time here in Marrakesh. Thank you.